Congratulations on purchasing your WaveWalker Performance. This video will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to assemble your boat. Make sure to watch the video titled WaveWalker Use and Care for operation and maintenance instructions as well. If assembling your WaveWalker on a boat ramp, be sure to work to the side so other boats may launch while you assemble yours. Begin by placing your hole bag as close as possible to the water's edge in a flat space which is clear of debris and sharp objects. Remember, you will have to drag the assembled 100-pound boat to the water. Remove both holes from the bag and roll out the holes with top sides up and both inflation valves at the same end. Be sure to temporarily store the carrying bag so it's readily available to pack your boat after use. Place the crossbars in the correct order from front to back on the hulls and space the hulls apart to fit. Slide each crossbar into the deflated hull straps. On the front and rear crossbars, screw the retainer bars into the threaded ends of the crossbars, clamping onto the straps. As with all the screws in the frame, take care not to cross-thread the retaining screws. This is best done by turning the screw counterclockwise until the threads align, then tightening the screw. Never force tighten a screw or it may strip the thread permanently. Next. Remove the covers from the air valves and turn the serrated valve stems until they pop up in the no airflow position. Attach the pump hose by pressing the bayonet fitting into the valve and twisting it until it clicks into place and is locked. Otherwise, air will escape instead of filling the boat. If you are using the electric pump, turn the pressure valve to 10 PSI and press the pump's on button. The electric pump will automatically shut off at the correct pressure. If you are using the manual pump, inflate to 10 PSI. Repeat this process for the second hull. Warning: Do not overinflate your hull. Once inflated, replace the valve covers and twist to lock them in place. As the hulls inflate, pull each hull snugly against the retainers on each end of the crossbars. Next, attach the front and rear support bars to the drive frame assembly with the provided screws. Never force tighten a screw or it may strip the thread permanently. Now lift the frame assembly and place it between the side support bars into the hull. You may have to pull the hulls apart slightly so the frame can settle between the pontoons. Press the frame assembly down firmly until the support bars rest on the pontoon hulls. Align the frame assembly support bars between the mounting rings on the hulls and attach the frame assembly to the hulls with the cinch straps, making sure they are snug. Wrap the strap ends under so they don't come loose during use. Now attach the steering handle support to the right rear frame support bar with two screws. Next, place the steering assembly, whose cables are already attached, on the steering handle support with the cables passing under the center crossbar and attach the steering handle assembly with two screws.
Now attach the rudder assembly to the rear crossbar using the two attached screws. Remove the rudder pin from the rudder bracket by rotating the circular cotter pin. Making sure the connected cables are not twisted, position the rudder assembly in the rudder bracket and replace the rudder pin into the bracket's top hole, through the rudder and through the bottom hole. Make sure the nylon washer is between the rudder and bottom hole and then reinsert the circular cotter pin, rotating it back into place. You can now connect the steering cable's spring-loaded end to the ball on the rudder assembly. Pull back the spring-loaded sleeve, place the end over the ball, and slide the sleeve back into place. Keep both the sleeve and ball clean because foreign materials may keep the cable from connecting properly and the cable may separate from the rudder during use of the boat. Lastly, recheck all your mounting screws and straps to be sure they are fully hand tightened and retract the rudder by pulling the ball on the black cord. Check the steering operation by moving the lever forward and back to be sure there are no obstructions and that the steering cable is correctly attached. Now you're ready to put on your personal flotation device and hit the water. Congratulations, you're ready to watch the Wave Walker Use and Care video and enjoy your Wave Walker performance boat.